I do not promote the use of legal or illegal substances. This video has been made for harm reduction purposes. Step 1. Get magic mushrooms. In countries like the USA, magic mushrooms are a Schedule 1 substance. In countries like Canada, they are a Schedule 3 substance. In the Czech Republic or Spain, it is perfectly legal to grow your own. Regardless of which country you live in, these mushrooms grow naturally all throughout the world. There are over 200 known species. Step 2. Choose your dosage. It has been suggested that there are five levels to the shroom experience. Which level you reach is highly dependent on both the dose and the set and setting. The definitions of each level have been taken from shroomery.org, and I will do my best to summarize them. Level 1. 0.7 to 1.5 grams of dried mushrooms. A mild stoning effect, with visual enhancements such as brightening of colors. Music may sound wider. Level 2. 1.5 to 2.5 grams of dried mushroom. Things start to move and breathe. Confused or reminiscent thoughts. Increase in creativity. Level 3. 2.5 to 3.5 grams of dried mushroom. Obvious visuals. Everything looking curved and or warped. Closed eye hallucinations become three-dimensional. Confusing of the senses. Seeing sounds and smelling colors. Time distortions and moments of eternity. Level 4. 3.5 to 4.5 grams of dried mushroom. Strong hallucinations, objects morphing into other objects. Destruction or splitting of the ego, things begin talking to you. Some loss of reality, time becomes meaningless. Level 5, 4.5 to 6 grams of dried mushrooms. This level is different than the previous ones in that the actual universe, where things are perceived in, ceases to exist. Satori type enlightenment and other such labels. Please note, these levels are not like floors in a building. There are infinite degrees to each level. The word level is misleading. Step 3. Set and setting. Set means how you currently feel, where you are in your life right now. Setting means where you decide to trip. Do not ever take your set and setting lightly. It is just as, if not more important, than the dosage itself. Many people enjoy taking mushrooms in nature. It's a beautiful experience. But if this is your first time ever taking psilocybin mushrooms, I cannot recommend this. If it is your first time, plan to stay in. I would recommend 1 to 2 grams for a first time experience. Even if you have experience with other psychedelics such as LSD, play it safe and just take a small dose. Mushrooms can produce a very different kind of trip with a very different body load. Your entire body can feel lethargic and heavy, opposed to LSD which tends to give people more energy and makes them feel lighter. Only take mushrooms if you are in a good place in your life and in a comfortable environment. Bad trips can happen easier on mushrooms than on LSD for most people. This is primarily due to the confusion that they cause and loss of thought control, as well as the heavier body load. You might find yourself speaking and forget what you were saying mid-sentence. It has been said that LSD is like a rocket ship where you're at the controls, Whereas with shrooms, it's kind of like being strapped to the back of a rocket ship and it's just taking you wherever it wants to go. For this reason, if it is your first time, I would highly advise a trip sitter. This must be someone you trust. Never trip around strangers or people you don't know very well. Your imagination can literally go wild and you can start imagining all kinds of crazy things. It happened to me before. I was convinced that my acquaintance wanted to murder both me and my girlfriend. It was not a fun experience. Step four, choose your method of administration. If you're interested in the fastest onset and the most intense come up, then using a mortar and pestle and crushing them into a fine powder, then boiling them in hot water and making a tea out of it will greatly increase the absorption of the molecule. It is also known to be less nauseating if you prepare it as a tea. Step five, take your mushrooms. If you're eating them whole, it can take anywhere from 45 minutes to 90 minutes to feel the effects. If you went and took my advice and made them to a tea, you could feel it in as soon as 20 minutes. If you've got like a lot of food in your stomach, it might take as long as an hour. I personally recommend fasting for the entire day that you plan to take the mushrooms. Not only will this allow you to come up faster on them, but it'll also greatly reduce the amount of nausea you feel and it'll increase the potency, so you shouldn't need as much as if you were taking them on a full stomach. Step six, trip. 
The length of a mushroom trip is four to six hours regardless of dose. Of course, you might completely lose track of what time actually means and it could end up feeling a lot longer than six hours to you. Try to go into this experience with no expectations. Just let whatever happens, happen. If you can't let go and you try to hold on to the direction of your thoughts, things can get a little scary. Having some past experience with meditation can really help here. Meditation teaches you to not align with every thought that goes through your mind. So it teaches you to be more like the observer of your thoughts. When you're experiencing an intense mushroom trip and you're latching on to every fearful thought that passes through your mind and aligning with it, it can really increase the chances of you catapulting yourself into a very bad headspace and in turn a very frightening experience or as people call it, into a bad trip. Bad trips can be filled with suicidal thoughts and there actually is a bit of history of people killing themselves on psychedelics. The main reason that anybody would commit suicide on a psychedelic is because you can enter an area where you lose complete track of time. I mean, not only do you lose, lose track of time, but time loses all meaning. A moment feels like eternity. And if you're in an extremely scary headspace and a moment is eternity, you can convince yourself that the only way out of the trip is to kill yourself. This is why it is extremely important, especially if you have little to no experience with psychedelics, to always take them with a trip sitter. I know I'm really stressing this, but again, always take psychedelics with a trip sitter. If you are new to them, or if you're going out of your way to try a higher than you're used to dose, this can save your life. Now, I'm not saying it's common that people commit suicide on psychedelics, but I'm saying if you have maybe a history of mental illness or you just are going through a very rough, pa rough patch in life, the possibility is there. It's better to be safe than sorry. And if you're going through a dark time in life or you have a history of mental illness, it probably isn't the best time for you to be taking psychedelics anyway. Now, if things do get frightening, try to change something in the outside world. Doing something like putting on a new song or even moving to a different location can greatly change the way that you perceive your experience. If you're around negative people, try to move to a quiet, silent space that you can be alone. You could also experience ego death. If you've never had this experience before, ego death can feel exactly like real death. You need to remind yourself though that no one has ever died from taking magic mushrooms. It is estimated that you would have to consume your own body weight in fresh mushrooms to even come close to dying. You need to recognize that it is just your ego that is dying. Just remind yourself that you're not going to die. Remind yourself that you will come back and try to let go of holding on to your thoughts. Just let the experience flow through you. I'm going to share a trick I learned to calm myself down. Now, I'm not sure if anyone else does this or if I'm the only one, but sometimes if I'm beginning to experience ego loss and I start getting uh, fearful, I will hold my breath. I often fear that if I let go, my body will forget how to breathe itself. I know this is irrational and ridiculous, but this is where my thoughts go sometimes. So I try to hold my breath, and not only does this help me focus more on my breathing, but I soon realize that I can't hold my breath long enough to kill myself. My body will make me breathe, eventually. And this is enough to reassure me that once I let go, my body will keep itself alive. The thing that can sometimes scare me a little bit though is for some reason when I'm under the influence of psychedelics, I can hold my breath for a really long fucking time. Step seven, integrate your experience. I personally have found mushrooms to be much more therapeutic than other substances, such as LSD or even ayahuasca. I believe each molecule has a certain lesson that they can teach you and some people respond better to the lessons of different molecules and some people simply need to hear the message that the mushroom has to deliver. Now, what mushrooms did for me is they showed me everything I was doing wrong in my life. It was like someone took a magnifying glass to all the lies that I had ever been telling myself and all the current lies and procrastinations that I was currently telling myself. And it showed me how when I do things like say, oh, I'll do that tomorrow, how I'm actually very well aware that tomorrow is never coming and that by putting it off and not doing it right away, I'm lying to myself and I'm sitting in a seat of false comfort and that if I ever really want to be the person that I thought I wanted to become, I needed to stop bullshitting myself right away and start taking more responsibility for my thoughts and for my actions and for my life. 
this confrontation with my thoughts and with the lies I've been telling myself actually led me into one of the most terrifying trips of my entire life. But it was through this terrifying experience that I learned the most about myself and that I was able to grow the most from it. That's why I really don't believe in bad trips. What can appear to be a frightening, um, life-destroying experience at the time can turn into something really beautiful. You just really have to learn what frightened you and what scared you during the experience and grow from it. The mushrooms can be a great teacher and often you don't get the experience that you want, but you get the experience that you need. Thanks for watching everybody. And I should probably let you guys know that I filmed this entire thing after taking acid earlier today. So I hope it didn't impact the video negatively. Um, <laughs> thank you to everyone supporting me on Patreon. You guys are amazing. I know I say this at the end of every video, but it's true. I am honestly touched by the amount of people who are supporting me on there. Thank you to these specific people in this little box thing I'm gonna put here. Um, you guys are especially awesome, but don't get me wrong, you're all awesome. I'm ranting right now because I might just be tripping out just a little tiny teensy bit. Anyway, stay safe everybody, take care, always test your substances, and till next time.